Have you ever purchased something to use in your homeschool and then it just sat there unused for days and weeks and months until you had to get rid of it or sell it or something? Hi, it's me. I have totally done this and I want to help you not do it ever again. <laughs> so I'm going to take a few minutes and share 10 things that we use on a daily basis in our homeschool rhythm. I'm gonna explain how we use them and why we use them, why they're good resources and tools for our day-to-day -day homeschooling so that you can decide if they're gonna be helpful to you as well and not accidentally buy something that you're never gonna use. Stay tuned. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Hi friends, I'm Sarah Ruth, the mama and creator behind KindleTogetherness.com. Here on our channel, we talk about faith-filled learning, faith-filled adventures, and faith-filled homemaking. Today, I'm going to hit us up with some discussion about 10 things we use on our regular basis in our homeschool days. Before I do that, would you go ahead and like this video, give us a subscribe so that you will know each time we put something else out. I would be so thankful if you'd follow along with us. If you watched any of our videos, you know that I really am listening to you, trying to create things that are not a waste of your time, but will actually help equip you and your family to have easier, smoother days so you can do life together. All right, so let's get to it. First up, I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of basic things that we like to keep on hand. This handy dandy, most beautiful um, caddy is what I call it when I tell my boys, go get your caddies. We have two of these. They were actually made by um, Red Brick Schoolhouse. I don't know that she actually runs this business anymore, but you can actually find these, like I have seen them at Home Goods and Ross. Now, you know, I'm not just dropping affiliate links. This isn't only to make me money. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of times there are little vases in here or a candle holder. I would say this is about three, three and a half inches in depth and it perfectly holds all of our little tools that we use on a regular basis. Um, so number one, some type of awesome caddy that is lightweight and easy for your kids to hold. It wouldn't hurt if it was also aesthetically pleasing, right? <laughs> Mine live behind me and then on our other bookshelf across the way. Um, within this caddy, I wanna show you our number two item. And this one, everybody's gonna have a different opinion about this, but for me and my family, these are top notch pencils. And when I was a educator and educator in the classroom, these were my favorite. They are mechanical pencils. Some people will argue that that's no good. I'm gonna tell you it's great <laughs> um, for a few reasons. This is a triangular shape, which is really nice for our children in their earlier years. You know, a lot of times we give them like chunky uh, Waldorf style, I'm looking at mine, <laughs> crayons and things um, before age six so that that grasp is there. But as they transition to a traditional pencil, and writing utensil. This has amazing shape for their little hands and it's actually quite comfortable for me as well. The other thing that I love about these pencils is they actually have a super thick lead. It's not your standard thinner um, lead that typically comes with mechanical pencils. This is a denser, thicker millimeter of lead and so it just with whole like stands up to their heavy you know how young children often press too hard when they're writing this tends to not break um it also comes with an entire thing like these come in packs of five and they come with an entire thing of lead and to be honest i've never had to buy lead by itself um they outlast my children taking them apart <laughs> We won't talk about that. Um, but this is the only pencil that I keep in our caddies and pretty much the only pencil I keep in our house. I know a lot of people love Ticonegra or however you say that. Those are my favorite. I don't want anything my kids have to get up and sharpen in the middle of a lesson. I really like just having something that they can click. There's an eraser at the back. You get extra erasers with every pack. So there's that. Um, next up, another writing utensil that... We especially appreciate, this is number three item. Oops, I lied. This is number four, guys. I don't have notes here. I'm just having to count. Um, is chalk. And I'm going to show you the two types of chalk 
that we have a preference. Who knew that there were preferences for chalk? First of all, check these out. What is not happening to my fingers? For all of you that have kids with sensitivities to getting this stuff all over their fingers, these are the answer. So first up is this handy dandy, um, it's almost like a pencil. Uh, it's thinner. This comes from, I believe it's called Chalk Full of Design. And I will drop some links to these in the um, details for the video. But I will tell you, uh, they come in all different colors. You get like a whole pack. It's actually right behind me of white and a whole pack of multicolored chalk. And you can trade these out however you like. You also get extra erasers. Um, this is a great buy. It keeps your kids' hands clean, helps them to write with a thinner stroke if that's what you're going for or if you need it. Second up are these. They are called Wonder Sticks. I am able to purchase these on Amazon. They glide so beautifully. They are chalkless. I mean, dustless. <laughs> they are dustless chalk. So they have this beautiful glide, and I'll show you how they write on my fifth most used item. <laughs> Um, this chalkboard, I'm going to put it in the comments too. They are just so clean writing. Okay, so they're just so smooth and so clean. And um, like I said, they, having a good chalkboard is a must-have in my opinion. Um, I use for my beginning writers, they learn how to write with chalk. Um, after they work in their salt trays, they begin using chalk. It's just bigger and heftier and it gives better feedback. You know, if you were writing with chalk, you can kind of feel the vibration coming back to you. And then um, having a good chalkboard that's kind of a smaller size like this is so handy uh, in our daily use. The other thing that I use this for in our homeschool is, um, and in one of my other videos, I show you how I do this, but I set up each of my children a board for the week that has like terms that we're going to be discussing, different dates or names that might be confusing so that when they're narrating to me, they're able to just look on here and they know exactly which words. Instead of them having to focus on people's names or places or dates, they can just focus on the narration and the names and places and dates are right here. So having a good smaller chalkboard that erases clean is an amazing asset in homeschool life. I use them for so many things. Okay, so I said that was number five. <laughs> Let's count. One, two, <laughs> three. I was counting this as three. Four. Uh-oh, I was only on four. <laughs> here is number five. Um, you would think, what in the world is she talking about here? As you can notice, each of these is laminated. In my opinion, a good laminator will get you so far. Um, I've had the same laminator now for seven years. It is just a cheapie off of Amazon. I will link it in the description. But you can see all of the things that stand up to the test of time because I laminate them. Some of these are in my shop. Some of these are from a variety of curriculums that we've used over time. Um, the other thing about having a laminator at home that I love is once you laminate something, you have made it um, dry eraser friendly. And here is my number six. Uh, a magic eraser is a necessary item in my homeschool because we use it to erase chalkboards cleanly as well as to erase dry erase. They are so helpful. And if my kids write on the wall, then they can get it off themselves. <laughs> um, but as you can see, these are, you can add, you know, dry erase marker to them. Your children can write on them. You can erase. So I'm going to put his name back on here because it's important. <laughs> My other son has one too, and they fuss and fight if they can't find theirs, so I put their names on it. All right, so a laminator, in my opinion, is a super important item to have. Top, speaking of dry erase markers, I'm going to show you my favorite dry erase markers. These are my favorite brand that I've used so far. They are the Bic Intense, Intensity Advanced. These write really clearly, really boldly. They don't seem to run out as easily as some of the others that I've had. 
So um, as you can see, I use dry erase markers for many, many things. Here's one of my kids' um, summer checklists. And that takes us to the next item I wanted to introduce you to, which is a menu. And I have seen that this is a very <laughs> hit or miss item in people's homeschools. Some people love and adore them and think they are wonderful. Other people hate them and find them really difficult to use. In my opinion, we, we have used these since my youngest was four. I actually used to do my own morning menus for him. Um, I think they're an asset for my homeschool. We literally use them every day we have lessons. And then even throughout the summer, I put things in there. Things that I like about this is I can display things that they need access to every day without having to have a clipboard or like a three ring binder. I loathe three ring binders. I'm not a three ring binder girl. Um, the issue some people have with these is getting papers in and out. I have not personally found it overly frustrating. I mean, they don't go in as easy as like just slipping them in, but you get used to it. I do recommend um, making sure that anything you put in here is done on a cardstock um, because it will go in more easily than thin sheets of paper. If you try to stick thin sheets of paper in here, it's a no-go. So the types of things that I put in here are our um, him we're working on any recitation maybe if there's some morning time things that my kids are working on then um, we have them do it in here so as you can see um, I use these on a regular basis they're wonderful and then we were talking about dry erase markers and that leads me to a good small dry erase board these are actually from simply Charlotte Mason they come with their math curriculums, their math boxes. Um, anything in this size is fine. We do use this gridded back side quite often for math. Um, and I like it because it's less paper used. It's so easy to wipe off a mistake and start over or to wipe off just a little section versus like erasing and having that eraser mark in their books. Um, when they're super young and you're doing work at the table, it's just simpler to do this. I'm not a blackboard girl. I'm not going to paint a blackboard wall in here. This is our breakfast room. We eat in here. I'm not trying to recreate a classroom setting um, in my breakfast room. So these work good for us. Um, and then another item that we have used for seven plus years is a really good um, book holder like this. And I think these are originally were designed for like cookbooks. But um, we use them to display books that we want to leave open, and they've been so great for that. And I will put this in the description below. I did get this one on Amazon, and I've had it for years and years now. I have another style as well, but we use these just about everywhere. The other thing that we use that's super similar to this, but just a little bit different, and that I have found at places like Hobby Lobby, Ross. Let me reach over here and grab it. Um, are these little easels that are made to like display maybe a piece of artwork. But in our home, we actually put things like this out. Or if you're working on like a character trait, you can put the card here. Or maybe I'm showing our picture study or just anything I want my children's attention to be on. I can stick it right here at the table and immediately have their attention on that one thing. The other thing that's nice about it is these actually hold like a whole set of things and so like if I'm working with one of my kids on a particular thing and it has many pieces then all these cards can just stay here nicely together and I have access to them easily. I move this back and forth to the table every day. It stays on display on one of our shelves and then when we're when we want to use it we just bring it to the table for my son. And then lastly is um, a good printer. For our family, we have been through several different printers, but for the past two and a half years, I have had an Epson EcoTank. I believe our model is a 3850. I will check that and put the correct one <laughs> in the description. The thing that I love about EcoTank is that I never have to think about the ink. Um, mine came with a whole extra set of ink and it's like this these things that you kind of like attach the ink thing. I don't know how to describe it, you guys. And you just pour it in there and it lasts forever. I um, run a co-op and I've printed all of our co-op stuff 
off through that ink. I have printed all of our many school things off. I've printed things for friends. We are into the thousands of pages and I have still not had to refill the ink, you guys. So I highly recommend the Eco Tank printers. Um, I do recommend the one I got for a couple of reasons. I like that it um, does automated two-sided printing. And I think also like the quality is better the higher the model. At least that's what I've read. So my suggestion is to you, make sure and research that before you go grab an eco tank because I don't think all eco tanks are alike. I think you need to look at what you're hunting and wanting to get out of it. So those are the things that we use most in our um, homeschool. Let me go back through it one more time. One, a caddy. Two, our favorite pencils. Three, our favorite chalk. Four, one of these. <laughs> Five, one of these. Six, seven. Eight, nine, a laminator. Ten, <laughs> a way to display things. And I guess he gave you a bonus at 11 with the printer suggestion. So there you have it. I hope that this was helpful to you. And if you have questions or comments or better suggestions, or you think my suggestions are, you are welcome to put that in the comment section and we can engage and help one another out. Um, but that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when our next video comes out. And I hope you are doing life together with your family.